<sighs> Long time no see live Instagram. What's going on? The Spanish on the road. My Spanish counterpart. How goes it? <sighs> All right. It is a beautiful Thursday night in Kelowna, B.C. I know, right? Look at her using all the lingo. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the Spanish on the road. When I saw your page, I kind of like shit my pants with excitement because, well, one, I love Spanish, and two, I'm always on the road myself. Be interesting to see why you choose why you chose that name. English on the road was the name I chose because I'm an English teacher, and I'm always traveling. You know, I'm always on the road. Although, I have been living in this one town for three years now, which is the longest time I have spent in one place since turning 18. I'm not so much on the road as much anymore, but on the weekends, I certainly am. Anyways, it is a lovely Thursday night here in British Columbia. It's only minus 12. That's all. So right now, it's pretty warm outside. I even just went outside in a t-shirt to see how it was, you know? Minus 12 is good, minus 20 is pretty shit. In fact, I fucked up, guys. There's the first one. To fuck up, gotta love swear words. Fuck up. Yes, beautiful, and we shall pin that. Yeah, so. I actually fucked up today. I went shopping and I bought a dozen eggs. I freaking love eggs. I usually have four eggs for breakfast. And unfortunately, I left my eggs in the car. Now, usually that's not a problem. You know, usually you leave something in the car. However, when it's minus 20 and you leave something in the car, it's not good. So this morning, or earlier on, I went to get my eggs and guess what? The eggs were frozen. So I fucked up. I made a mistake. To fuck up is to make a mistake. Past tense, add ed. It's a regular verb. F-U-C-K-E-D. With a T pronunciation. T -t -t fucked up. So my name's Ronan. And I fucked up because I left my eggs in the car and they are frozen. Actually, what's pretty good now, I can throw them at a person and they don't break, but they just smash them in the head. So, all I can tell you, what's up? Ah, Canada, I like your page. And that jump start thing you got, god damn, I need one of those. Anyways, as I was saying, the frozen eggs are really good for throwing at people, but unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to eat them anymore. I think it was a couple of weeks ago I left a coffee in the car. Bring a whole new meaning to iced coffee. I always fucked up. It's life. I did the same way. I put my some eggs in the freezer that I'm fall for. Ah, yeah. Wait, why would you put your eggs in the freezer? To cool down. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I get that one. I usually just put them under the tap. Or in Canada, I'll just get the eggs that are boiling, hold it outside for three seconds, four seconds, and that's it. So that guy there, Evenji Canada. I probably butchered that name. He is living in, uh, I think it's Calgary or somewhere. And um, where I'm living, it's only today, as I said, about minus 12. But where he's living, that's a proper winter. Something I do not want to experience. I'm more of a small town guy myself. Everybody's different. It's a trick to peel them off better. Ah, I always have that problem with eggs. You know? I get the eggs. I'm trying to peel it. I just keep burning my fingers. And eventually I'll just drop it. Yeah. Riveting conversation. Anywho. My name's Ronan. This is English on the road. I decided to just do a random live video. Holy shit, minus 30. Minus 
30. All right, let's talk about temperature. Cold wind escaped Russia. It was lucky. Temp er uh chur. I always find this is a very interesting uh, topic to talk about because as one of my friends said, everybody in the world can talk about weather. You know, I'm originally from Ireland and it never actually one day, one time in my life in Ireland, it was minus 20 and it was actually a really good night. So it was about oh, 2004. 14 maybe 2013 I can't remember something around those times and it was a big freeze all of Europe had a massive cold snap the airports weren't working uh, the city would come to a standstill and we actually got snow in Ireland we rarely get snow and we are not prepared for snow anyways to cut a long story short one night it got to minus 20 it was extremely windy it was extremely snowy and I was in a bar, of course, with some of my friends. It was two o'clock in the morning and it was time to go home. So we opened the door, we go outside, and we just looked. And bloody hell was it cold. It was freaking freezing. So we just closed the door. We turned to the barman. We look at him. And he says, all right, boys, you can stay. So that was my first experience of having minus 20. We stayed in the bar until about five or six o'clock in the morning, drank lots of Guinness, drank lots of whiskey. And sure, by the time we left, we weren't cold. We couldn't feel anything at all. It was great. Now that's good in Ireland because that only happens once in a blue moon. Like once every 50 years, it gets that cold. However, if that was your solution to staying warm in Canada, or if that was your solution to being very cold in Canada, you may never stop drinking, and that's when you develop alcoholism. And nobody wants to be an alcoholic because that's not fun. Vancouver minus seven, two centimeter. I know, Vancouver is just crazy. I wanna go to Vancouver. I miss the smell of the sea, but it's too big. Anywho, that was my story about uh, minus 20 degrees in Ireland. Usually, in the winter, it rarely goes below zero. Maybe for about two weeks in January or February, it might get sub-temperatures. But even so, we rarely get snow. So, in Ireland, if we get even one centimeter of snow, similar to Vancouver, the entire country shuts down. And I freaking love it. Whenever we were kids, if we got a little bit of frost, the first thing we'd do is turn on the radio and try to listen for the school cancellation notice. Now the problem was, I lived close enough to the school that I could walk, so the only way I found out was by actually going to the school. Are you serious? I also live in, oh, some time in Istanbul. Vancouver, there was another comment there about Ireland. Hello from Thailand. Nice to meet you. Dude, I love my students from Ireland. Of course you do. They're fucking great. Irish people are amazing. I know. In fact, there's another funny story for you. Guys, if you can understand these stories, you are doing absolute, absolutely fantastic. Myself and my friend Jordan um, were walking to school one day. It was a snow day. There was lots of snow. However, for some reason, our old, cold, miserable school decided to stay open. So, we decide, I don't wanna to go to school today. You know, it's a snow day, let's go home. So myself and my friend Jordan, we go back to my house. My mom was there. I wasn't expecting her to be there. And I say to my mother, oh, uh, we got to school, but it was canceled, so we're just gonna go into the yard and uh, make a snowman, which we actually did. And it was great, we had a lot of fun. We made a big snowman, we called him Paul, we gave him red hair after a rugby player, and uh, we gave him a jersey to wear. I still have that photo at home. Now, the one issue was, because I live so close to town, at lunchtime, a lot of students go home. And so, at about 1 p.m., my mother calls me and my friend Jordan into the house. We walk into the house, and she points out the window, and of course, out the window, 
there are some other students wearing the blue uniform walking home for lunch. And that's when I got busted. Get busted. Let's pin this motherfucker. All right, I got busted. If you get busted, you get caught. I love you too. Of gun underscore music. So we got busted. My mother found out I told her a lie. She was not one bit happy. She told me to get uh, my uniform back on and get my ass to school. To be honest, I didn't care. I had a great day. I got to make a snowman. Life is good. And of oh, gun music, you're killing it with the compliments. Thank you. You are a force to be reckoned with. I've been telling people that my whole life, my friend. <sighs> There we go. Two or three random anecdotes to start. Number one, frozen eggs in the car. Number two, we were snowed in in a bar. The best place to be snowed in. And number three, one time I ditched school with my friend Jordan to make a snowman and my mother busted us. Pretty good. Aha, Raphael V. Silva has joined. Yes, I was caught red-handed. And my hands were probably red because we weren't wearing gloves to make a snowman. <sighs> Them were the days. It's really funny because when I lived in Norway and now I'm living in Canada where snow is, well, so common, it's normal to have a lot of snow. And, um... I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, so like the kids, they don't give a fuck. They don't care about the snow. All they're thinking about is skiing or something like that. But for us in Ireland, whenever it snowed, it was a big deal. It was a hell of a lot of fun. You'd be to have a snowball fight with maybe a hundred people. Those days were crazy because you only have one or two days a year where we got snow. God damn, they were fun days. Canadians do not know how to enjoy the snow. In my opinion, they should make a snowman. They should make a snowman army. Yeah. Good times. Anyway, someone posted a question. Can you explain when you use present sentences when you were telling a story from the past? Oh, very good question. All right, let's pin that one. All right. This is a very good question. This will help you with your IELTS. This will help you, well, in general topic. Let's think about a movie. Think about something you did last week. Think about an interesting story, like getting snowed into a bar. When we talk about stories from the past, we sometimes use the present tense. For example, I'm drinking whiskey in a bar with my friends. It's a lot of fun. Outside, Minus 20 degrees. It is windy. It is cold. It is dark. Oh, 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 oh. I finish my beer. I put it down. The clock strikes 2 a.m. It's time to go home. I put on my jacket. I slowly stumble down the stairs. I don't walk. I've been drinking. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I slowly walked the, or stumbled down the stairs. My friends and I open the door. We look outside and freaking hell is it cold. We turn our heads. Gotta look this way to talk. We look at the barman. He invites us back in because he is a kind man with a big heart. Justin Bieber, 19, wants to be in my video. I don't think that's the real Justin Bieber. Anyways, back to my story before I got distracted. I said everything there in the present simple or the present continuous. I'm drinking a beer. I put on my jacket. We open the door. We turn our head. The barman says, come back in. All of that is in the present tense. However, that situation happened maybe five, six, seven years ago. The reason that we use the present simple 
is to grab a person's attention. Is to keep the listener interested. We don't use the past tense for a story. We use the present simple for a story. We use the present continuous to set the scene. I'm sitting in a bar. I'm drinking a Guinness. The fire is roaring over there. I'll do my best to save it. If I remember, I tend to forget these things. Do not reduce your accent. I'll get to that in a moment. I keep getting sidetracked. Good God, Ronan. Pay attention. So long story short. When we are talking about a story from the past, about your life, about some experience you've been through, we use the present simple. Because we were there. Because it's more interesting. And for you, the person listening to the story, I have your attention. I grab your attention. Don't use the past simple when you're telling a story. If you think about it, think about a movie. Think about a book that you read or you're currently reading. Think about the Avengers. It's just the movie that came to my head. Captain America is fighting Thanos. Thanos is kicking the shit out of Captain America. Tony Stark is knocked out. Thor has been thrown away or something. I don't know. Captain America stands up. He picks up his shield. He looks up. And then suddenly all his friends do the weird circle things and they come out of the sky. Don't ask me how. He takes his hammer and he charges towards Thanos again. When you use a present simple, it's more interesting. So there you go. I should have just said that. Use the present simple, it's more interesting. I hope I answered your question. Ali Gavidel 65. Rad name. What about if we used the past simple, would it be wrong? Not necessarily. So here's the thing. I'm a native speaker, and for me, I will jump from past simple to present simple when I'm talking about a, um, a story, when I'm talking about experience, or when I'm talking about something that happened in the past. It's not easy to know when to switch from past to present or present to past. It's up to you. If you're doing an IELTS exam, they want to hear the present simple when you're talking about a memory or an event. In your IELTS exam, I'm only going with IELTS because that's a pretty common exam, but for any speaking exam, if they ask you to talk about a movie, a book, a song that you like, a memory, an event, a concert you went to, definitely have a couple Whoops, have a couple of sentences in the present simple. You must have a couple of sentences in the present simple and then go to the past. For example, I was happy. The rock star walks on stage. He looks around. He says, are you ready? I was over the moon. So that way, when I'm talking about how I feel, I use the past. But when I'm describing the scene, I use the present simple. All right. Justin Bieber. Ah, you see, you're not the real Justin Bieber. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. You're from India. Number one. Do not get rid of your accent. Fuck anybody who says you need to get rid of your accent. They have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Excuse my foul language. Actually, this is my channel. I can say whatever the fuck I want. A lot of people ask me, how can they reduce their accent? Don't. Why would you reduce your accent? It's your culture. It's where you're from. When I teach English in class, I generally do not have as strong an accent as I normally do. 
But that is because I am working with low-level learners of English. It's a whole different story. If I'm teaching, uh, I actually have a private student. And when I'm with him, I talk like I normally do. Because he's a higher level, he's been living in Canada for a couple of years, he understands everything that I say, he understands the colloquialisms, he understands anything. It upsets me when people say they want to get rid of their accent. I have a German friend. That's not really a friend. I know a German girl. And she's trying to get rid of her accent. And the problem is, she sounds fake as hell. No word of a lie. She might say, Hey, how's it going? And you kind of look at her and you're like, can, can you tone down the Disney, the Disney accent, please, and have your German accent? I would prefer people to be real. Legit. All right, there's another one from Justin Bieber. But native speakers unable to understand our English. That's why I want to... Well, that's not your fault. That's their fault. Maybe you just need to slow down, pump the brakes. Don't talk so fast. Talk in the mirror. Make sure that you articulate every single word and syllable. And if a native speaker says they can't understand you, give them, um, well, give them my business card, tell them about my English channel, and I will help them understand English. Because sometimes they might just be rude, they might just be inconsiderate, and whatever. And just ignore those people. Who cares what your accent sounds like? Long story short. For me. Do not get rid of your accent. Your accent is beautiful the way it is. Nobody needs to change your accent when it comes to speaking English, French, anything. Unless the language needs it. For example. The CH sound. In some languages is ha. Huh. I have a friend, like for names, names is probably the best way about it. A lot of people say my name is Ronan, my name is actually Ronin. And that's a bit of pronunciation, but that's an accent. I don't know where I'm going with that example. That's a bad example. I'm going to cut that example. There's a problem when you do a live. You start to make a little mistake and then you go off on a tangent about that mistake. And then you realize you've been talking shit for a couple of minutes. That's life. Annie, overall, don't be afraid of your accent. Don't be ashamed of your accent. Your accent is special. Your accent can get you places. Trust me, I've gotten pretty far in life with my Irish accent. We are known to have the gift of the gab, and, well, it's bloody true. We do. Here's a good one. Justin Bieber, with all the questions. How to understand native speakers easiest way, quite simply, listen to English every single day. Start listening to some podcasts. It doesn't matter if you don't understand. You need to get your ears ready. You need to go on YouTube. And don't listen to English teachers if you want to understand native speakers. Because, like, for example, when I do some videos, I do change the way I talk. It's like my teacher voice. You need to go to YouTube and listen to Joe Rogan, for example. Not ventured. Nothing gained. Ooh, wisdom. You need to go to YouTube. You need to listen to the news. You need to listen to the weather. That's actually a pretty good way to do it. And you need to listen to just uh, television shows I'm not a fan of because they're actors, they're paid, they're, um, they're doing it a little differently. For me, in my wild professional opinion you should listen to podcasts you should listen to interviews you should listen to a two-hour podcast i don't know if you take the subway to work i don't know if you walk to work fuck yes oxygen music of oh, gun music oxygen where the hell did i get that from sorry baby i'm gonna pin this ahead of you try to immerse yourself in english guys so it just depends on where justin bieber is right now He's still in that house in Brazil. Uh, teach a voice. I still watch British TV shows with the subtitles. Peaky Blinders have no idea what they say. British accent is hard. Yes. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, I never thought of it like that. 
So, okay, number one, if you want to understand English speakers, you need to surround yourself by English speakers. You need to get yourself a job. Honestly, a job in a kitchen might be good. A job in a restaurant might be good. A job where you get to interact with people. I don't know where you live, Justin Bieber. However, I guarantee you there are volunteer opportunities. I tell all my students to volunteer. I tell them to go to the uh, retirement home, play chess with someone, talk to someone. Um, there's a big music festival every summer in my hometown, or not my hometown, in Kelowna, where I live, and I tell my students to go there and volunteer. It doesn't matter what job you're doing, just walk and talk. I can actually give you some examples that uh, some of my students did. So, one big key thing that I believe is, uh, I'm just going to pin this so I don't forget. One big thing that I believe is um, empowerment. Empowerment is key to learning a language. If you want to be confident in a language, if you want to understand a language, if you want to really learn a language, you need to be empowered. I have some students and I really wanted to empower them. So I gave them some tasks. One task was to ask the time of five different people. Even though they have watches, even though they have phones, their homework was to go outside, find a stranger, and ask them what time it is. The stranger will answer them. That's it. It's that fucking easy. No word of a lie. I have another student. She deliberately took the wrong bus one day. So, she could sit down and listen to people's conversations. And that is a really efficient way. Because you're sitting there, and you don't know these people, you don't know what's going on in their lives, but her job was to just sit there and eavesdrop into all the different conversations. And you'd be surprised what you hear. When I lived in Toronto, I used to put my earphones in, but I wouldn't listen to music because there's always somebody talking, and I'm a nosy motherfucker. And I love to hear what's going on. So, I would just listen to them. Now, I'm not learning English, but it was very interesting. So, Justin Bieber, what I think you should do, because you do not live in an English-speaking country, you should find expats. Find people, find, um, for example, uh, a local language school and find the native speakers of English. Find the teachers. I guarantee you there's a Facebook group for immigrants in Mumbai. Join the group. Find out where they go. Find out what they do. And join them. And heck, if they don't want you to join them, just sit beside them and listen to them. That's honestly what I believe. Immerse yourself in the language as of gun underscore music said. Now, this person here, Avenji Canada. I know this guy is a Canadian citizen. I'm not sure where he's from. I'm hoping he'll tell me in a moment. His English is fucking fantastic. He's saying that he's watching a... Uh, British TV shows, which are fantastic. I'm not going to lie. I freaking love uh, British TV shows. And um, Peaky Blinders, that's a good one. Now, I'm not going to lie. Those accents are freaking crazy because you got some Irish accents and you got some British accents. Watching with the subtitles is definitely a great idea. One issue I have with doing that, is, depending on your level, if you're at a lower level, they're going to use a lot of slang, a lot of colloquialisms. That might be a bit hard to get your head around. In fact, you know what? This is a TV show y'all gotta watch. Eight out of ten cats does. Oh, I hate having fat fingers. There we go. Alright, go to YouTube. Type in 8 out of 10 cats. Does countdown. Sit back, relax, and watch and laugh. That is a TV show all about numbers, letters, and everyone speaks English. It is all usually all British comedians. It is 
hilarious. But that is a great way to learn English because they're comedians. They have no script. The majority of it is just off the top of their head, which means it is one of the most natural styles of English that you can use. <coughs> Excuse me, I burped. Anywho, Bieber, thank you for the questions. Really good example, really, uh, really good questions. Please do not kill your accent. By all means, work on your accent. Um, if you think people are having trouble understanding you, just slow down a bit. Try to articulate the words a little more. But be proud of your accent. I know I'm definitely proud of my accent. When I talk to people, well, they know I'm Irish immediately. All right. So I came here to teach you one or two expressions. Guys, if you have questions, you just jump on in. Holy shit, it's been 30 minutes already? Fuck me, time flies. What's going on here? Justin Bieber, Paul Walker, what's going on there? All right, we've still got a few people here. Let's have a look. All right. Whew. Let's have a look at some English expressions. Completely random, out of the blue expressions. And the first English, but Nanda, hello. The first is to, what's that one? Take a stand. <whistles> Interesting, I don't like that one. Um, all right, here's an easy one actually, just so I can get started and get my uh, brain going in the English one. Take after, phrasal verb. There we go. All right, take after, phrasal verb. Took after, past tense. Will take after for the future. If you take after a person, you are similar to them. I take after my father. In the way, I have no hair. Two years ago, I had a beautiful head of hair. Then I started to lose it up here. So I shaved it all. I take after my father. In that I'm a beautiful motherfucker. So is he. I do not take after my father in the way that I am absolutely terrible at mathematics and he is amazing at mathematics. I take after my mother in that I'm quite the creative person and that I'm really drawn to education and learning and the arts and drama and that's what she is into. Fuck yeah, I look handsome. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Love Instagram. So, take after means you have the same personality. You have the same attributes. Sometimes you physically look the same as a family member, as your parents. So, I take after my father, physically. I'm tall. I'm bald. I have the same illnesses that my father has. I take after my mother with my personality. I'm always active. I'm never lazy. I wake up early. I really enjoy education and the arts. So that is to take after. I'm trying to think of another example with take after. Guys, if you have an example, please jump in and save me. Unfortunately, John takes after his father. He's an asshole and so is his father. John takes after his father. He likes to drink a little too much. It's a sad story. Take after, take after, take after. So yeah, take after. It can be, I physically take after, that I look like my mom or my dad. Or, I have the same personality as my mom or my dad. I take after my dad in terms that we both get angry very fast. That's not true, just an example. 
So take after, phrasal verb. Took after for the past. Sweating. Ah, I'm sweating, and it's like minus 20 outside. That's a new one. That was a terrible example. I'm sorry I wasted your time with that one. Let's have a look at another one. Without hesitation, I take after my uncle. Oh, that's a great one. It doesn't have to be your mom or dad. It can be your family. I take after my dad with my nose. I got the exact same nose as my dad. It's a pretty big nose. My dog is picky at food. He takes it after me. He takes after me. I freaking like that one. You guys are awesome. Why aren't you teaching English? God. But yeah, there are some great examples. So let's take after in terms of um, physically, in terms of personality, in terms of attributes. Pretty good. Let's get one or two more. My legs are getting tired. Oh, and someone asked me about the wall here. Where was that question? Uh, or question or comment. Wasn't that the wall of your other apartment? Oh, you're freaking on it, you know that? Carmen Deval, 27. Well, Carmen Deval, this is actually just a wall hanging. It's just material, so it goes wherever I go. But a uh, good catch. She takes after her grandfather in her talent for design. You take after your mother, you have the nose in her eyes. Oh, thank you. Perfect. How do you know that? <laughs> I do take after my mother with these beautiful blue eyes. Yeah, she gave them to me. The best gift I ever did get in my life. But yeah, so physically, people take after each other. I'm wondering, Carol, do your kids take after you in personality? Do they take after you physically? Let me know. One more. Square. To call it square. That's a good one. We'll say square up. Square up. And boom. And let's see. Pin comment. There we go. Okay. To square up is to be even about money. Oh, fuck, you beat me to it. By the way, Justin Bieber, I'm from Ireland, the most beautiful country in the world. Small, but beautiful. Anywho, yes, as Carmen said, uh, to square up is to be even, generally talking about money. For example, uh, my drug dealer gave me uh, three ounces of weed. I only had enough money for two ounces of weed. So I said to him, hey, I'll square up with you next week. That means next week I will give my drug dealer the money for the last ounce. Maybe some interest, depending on your drug dealer. I had to square up my tab in the bar because I left without paying. John needs to square up with me. He borrowed some money and then he just disappeared. John always does that. What's up, Shally Sharma 436? So don't ever give money to John. That's a warning for everybody here. Heads up, yo. Do not trust John. Do not give John your money. Because John will never square up with you. Yes, tab is the check. John owes me $10. John fled the country. I like my personality too. Thank you. So if you have debt, if you owe somebody money, you need to square up with that person. Square up is a phrasal verb. I squared up with John last week. John squared up with me. He gave me what he owed me. Now you can also use it with just square. Square is generally used for money. I'm pretty sure it's always used for money. For example, uh, myself and my friend, we, uh, we often go for dinner together. And sometimes he pays, sometimes I pay, sometimes we split it down the middle. And uh, you know, we, lo we lose track of who owes who money. And one day we were just talking about it. Like, I, I think I owe you $5. And he said, no, actually, I might owe you $7. And 
Oh God, I can't remember it. You know what, let's just call it square. Let's just call it even. So let's call it square means let's not worry about it. Let's just not give a fuck about it. There's a saying, fair square, something like that. I don't know that one, but look it up and let me know. I'll make a video about it. So long story short, to square up is a phrasal verb. I squared up in the past. I need to square up. I will square up with John in the future. And to call it square means to make it even, to call it even. And hey, look, don't worry about it. Let's just call it square. If you go for drinks with people, this is always interesting. So I'm from Ireland and in Ireland, if you want to buy a beer, you go up to the bar, you pay your money and you take a beer. Your relationship with the barman is very platonic. They just give you a beer and that's it. However, I'm living in Canada. And in Canada, it's a whole hullabaloo where you gotta have uh, a server come to you. They ask you what you want and they relay the message to the bartender. And you're waiting 20 minutes for your fucking beer and it's terrible. And then at the very end, you need to square up. And then you gotta wait for the waitress or the server to come back. And you know, then they're asking you questions, blah, 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 blah. It takes so long to square up in Canada. There's no such thing as a quick getaway from the bar. So what you might say, for example, the server comes over and you'll say to them, hey, I'd like to square up, please. I'd like to pay my tab, please. So there you go. That is square up. Now, aspirante, aspirant, how do I pronounce that? Aspirant, two, two, two. You should have only had two twos there. If you say someone won a competition fair and square, you mean that they won honestly and without cheating? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, John did not win the competition fair and square because John is a cheating bastard. I really don't like John. The football team won fair and square. Stop arguing about it. You lost. Deal with it. John and Mike were both trying to ask Mary out. That's a bad example. I'm not going to go there. But yes. Carmen, as you say. Yes, Asbran, that's what I wanted to say. So, if you win something fair and square, you win without cheating. Anywho, it's getting late. Well, not really. I don't know what time is it. Hold on a second. It's, uh, it's nine o'clock, which is actually pretty late for me. My name's Ronan. This is English on the Road. I love teaching English. It's what I do. I've been teaching English for about... Oh, about six years now. Before that, I was also a teacher, but I was teaching religion and history. A whole different life. There's a lot about me you don't know. I have the best job in the world. I get to help people learn English. I get to help people like you learn English. Instagram is where I can really teach the way I enjoy it, which is just a crazy style, as you know. I'm going to go to bed because I'm getting pretty tired. I will be back soon. Anything else? No? Overall, thank you for joining me. Tell everybody about this page. Tell the world. Tell the universe. Run outside right now and shout to the world. Follow English on the road. No. Parsi. 606, squared up does not mean let's go Dutch. I'll make a video about that. Anywho, I'm gonna bounce because you're already saying goodbye and you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me for this random live video. Stay tuned because there's actually a website coming soon. I can't wait to show you. I got some courses. Everything is taking off right now and the sky is not even the limit. It's coming up on 9 p.m. here. My name's Ronan. It's minus 20 outside. I'm hoping it gets a little bit warmer and you guys go kick some freaking ass and speak English. I love you. Thank you. Goodbye.